Hey, I'm back. I'm a little under the weather, but um, we're going to try to get through this. Probably two more videos after this. Um, so, yeah, today is going to be three speakers. The reason is three because, like, the live stream for this program, the summit, it kept going in and out. So I'm not even going to get this guy's full speech. This guy is from Angola. The second guy, I didn't get where he's from. But I don't like how he's talking anyway. And the third guy, he's from South Africa. Now, I'm realizing that everything is, like, all-inclusive. Like, you add in apartheid, you add in slavery, <clears throat> you add in colonization. But it's like, you can't really do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, as far as slavery goes, I'm sure slavery did happen there. But it was you guys enslaving your own people. And then you sold them to the, you know, Europeans and everybody else. And then uh, you stopped because they wanted to stop. Let me stop because I'm just going off. Let's just go ahead on and react to this and see what they're talking about. <clears throat> um, this guy's from Angola. Angola did practice uh, in slavery. <clears throat> Angola did practice um, slave trading. So, yeah. Let's see what he got to say. Let's see if he bring that up. As, far as, the, uh, as well as the African Union for this initiative. Uh, Africa uh, and humanity generally has been very concerned. And the history of humanity has uh, witnessed... Uh, the worst phases uh, of its uh, existence through uh, colonization where people have occupied the territories of others leading to the plundering of natural resources and in the process uh, they impose uh, strange or foreign uh, uh, cultures uh, which compromised uh, the lives of the people colonization stole from African peoples uh, their living conditions uh, and also transformed uh, African peoples into objects. Okay. When he say that, what do he mean? So they made them into objects, but slavery didn't happen on the continent. Sla it, it, for you to be made into an object, you had to be under slavery. You didn't go under slavery under them. You had colonization. And with that, I wouldn't say that y'all were objects. You just picked up on their culture. So what are you talking about? Angola. That practiced the slave trade. Augustine Nonoto, the founder of uh, the Angola nation, declared during uh, in 1968 he declared that africa was like an an immobilized body which everybody was coming to plunder but the history of colonization as well as uh, well why was that let's ask that why was that why do you feel that everybody felt they they could come over there and take, take, take. Is it because the leaders were selling? Hmm. As, as well as uh, slavery are uh, amongst uh, the major crimes. Were they selling the minerals? Hmm. hmm. That's the African continent suffered. My country, Angola, was uh, col colonized uh, for five uh, uh, centuries uh, and for those 500 years Angolans uh, were subjugated our ancestors uh, defended themselves nonetheless uh, with uh, very obsolete uh, uh, means against uh, they defended themselves against uh, this uh, colonization our resources were plundered and we had no okay I'm gonna look that up um I don't know, like, you said they stood up for themselves, but what about the people that you sold off? What about those people? 
I have yet to hear anybody say, we participated in the slave trade. I have yet to hear that. Voices. We had no means to decide our own future. It is therefore important for us to take a second look at our capacities as human beings. Uh, our independence was not offered us. Uh, it was through the struggle that uh, the Angolan people undertook it. And we... I had all this wearing a European suit. <laughs> if y'all was serious about this, y'all be in your, your, uh, your tribal attire. All other African peoples are fighting through us. We lost our brothers uh, and sisters. You lost your brothers and sisters. So we're your brothers and sisters now. You lost, or did you sell your brothers and sisters? Let me stop. Like it's it's pissing me off because it's like you're not saying anything about the slave trade. You're not talking about your your participation in it at all. It is really pissing me off. It, it the reason why I'm so mad because this second speaker he gonna really piss me off. Y'all gonna hear it. Uh, and today we are independent. Uh, we've been independent for 48 years. We are now, we now have our destiny in our own hands. No, you don't. We nonetheless cannot uh, forget the past. And we cannot uh, ignore the harmful effect of colonization on our people. Unfortunately, history evolves. It does not... Uh, it's not static in the in the past. Through its consequences and its effects, it is felt today. We as Africans, we will not be here if there had not been colonialism and slavery. We we would not have been at this stage. I feel some kind of way because you talking about some and slavery, but y'all were practicing slavery in your own land to sell off people. I, I'm I'm irritated by that. I'm so irritated. It's, our circumstances would have been much better today. And coloni colonization uh, and slavery were weapons used to destroy our people. You sold us. You sold our ancestors, bro. You participated in it. You need a participation award. Is that what you're asking? I think that's what they're asking. They're asking like, hey, we sold, we sold you human goods and we have not received a good offer. We only got dinner plates and umbrellas. <laughs> and they were... They also put in place immaterial weapons and the consequences were losses of human lives. And these are, this cannot be quantified, such losses. And we would have the necessary compensation to repair what was destroyed by colonialism. colonialism. We are talking about reparations for African countries, and that is the reason why the Angolan peoples have come, uh, are represented here at this conference, whose theme is to, is to build and have a united front for reparations for all African. We don't need no united front. You you decided that when you sold us. It's about to be over. I'm gonna say what I gotta say in a minute. Sorry. Peoples. Angola is attending this uh, conference uh, to look at these courses. It's a matter of justice uh, uh, based on our history, also for remembrance uh, of our past. Okay, yeah, it's over now. Because it cut off, so, yeah, the, it, it cut off. It was like a good 30-minute break of, we're sorry for the interruption. But, okay, he talking about some united front. That is some slick talk, ain't it? That is so slick. It wasn't united when you sold us off. It wasn't united when you were when you practiced slavery, even before they got there. It wasn't united. It wasn't united when you sold us off. It wasn't united when you got them umbrellas, them dinner plates, your guns, your muskets, and now it ain't no more of good use. 
don't include slavery because you participated in slavery. The only way that you can include slavery is if you're going to pay black Americans. I'm repping for black Americans. That's the only way. But let me get to this next speaker. This next speaker, he got his nerve. I don't like him. I don't know where he's from. If you any if anybody know, let me know. All right, we on speaker two. Um, this guy, I don't know where he's from. I'm looking at him. He has a bodyguard with him. I don't know, like, is this like some type of na nation thing? Or is it like, you know, is he got some type of beef going on for protection? That's why I wanted to know, like, where where is he from? Um, this speaker, I don't really care for him. Uh, we gonna react to him and see what he talking about. Of humanity and Africans in particular. Like I said, it kept cutting in and off. So after that first speaker, it jumped to this. Like so, I missed the name and everything. But okay, here we go. We should look ourselves in the face and uh, tell ourselves that colonization, slavery, apartheid, and. Uh, have been practices that uh, use the law of the jungle where the stronger uh, animals eat up the weaker ones. Now, did he say that the colonizers used the law of the jungle or they took advantage of it? You see how he all inclusive with it? He's putting apartheid with slavery with colonization and it's like you can't really do this though because you're gonna have to go back <laughs> you gotta go back a lot of years and you're gonna have to um you got the like i said that damn arab you got upper africa they got arabs they were you guys sold africans to them too so it's like are y'all gonna pay them reparations too I don't get it. With this united front thing, too. That's weird. Let's go ahead. This moment is an opportunity for us to remember what happened in the past and also underscore the fact that we should not only remember slavery, colonization, apartheid as uh, events uh, that have uh, characterized the continent, but also as uh, uh, circumstances that have deprived Africa of its human, economic, uh, and cultural resources. Africans uh, resign themselves uh, to uh, this uh, indignity, abandoning uh, her culture, her religion, and has been obliged to forget her heroes. And uh, also, Africans have learned to imitate their masters. Uh, masters. The African uh, has uh, forgotten to be himself. And uh, if we do not try to look at uh, most of the problems that are hindering the development of our continent, uh, due to this uh, unfortunate uh, history behind us uh, with a very negative impact uh, on our countries uh, uh, including uh, migration and uh, deterioration of the social fabric uh, uh, ethnic conflict uh, experienced by our continent and so on and so forth the excellencies uh, heads of state and heads of government uh, distinguished invited guests yeah we've had ethnic problems though Y'all, y'all been had that before they got there. So y'all trying to blame white people for your ethnic problems. You're trying to to blame everybody else for your ethnic problems when you've been doing this for thousands of years, and people knew that and they took advantage of that, and you fell for it. <clears throat> now you up there with your European suit and your European soldier. <laughs> As tell it saying it, you know, y'all deserve reparations because y'all lost your African culture. I don't think that's true. That's why I say I think that's slick talk. I think he talking about us. He talking about we act like the masters. That is so interesting for him to even say that. I don't like I don't like him. Cause he trying to be slick with it. 
They calling white people... When did they start calling white people masters over there? They know that we had slave masters. I know he know that. He intelligent, man. So why are you saying you're masters? I don't like it. I don't care what nobody say. Ladies and gentlemen, talking... Talking more specifically about the topic of today, which uh, focuses on uh, reparations, uh, the first stage should be to recognize these uh, abominations that have been committed against humanity. You committed the abominations. Y'all over there chopping off fingers. You did that. Y'all sold people. You did that. You are the abomination. Mr. Slick Talk. Abominations that have been committed uh, against uh, humanity and Africans in particular. This has been recognized by the United Nations. So we should together say never should that happen. So the world uh, should uh, compensate countries that have been victims of this. The world should compensate black Americans. <laughs> you took our inventions. You sold us. The world owes black Americans, including you. Uh, abominable crimes uh, within the history of humanity. And for this reason, I encourage countries uh, that have uh, been uh, authors of these abominable crimes to ask for pardon and uh, surrender the cultural uh, heritage that they have uh, uh, stolen from Africa. So these uh, things, uh, when returned, will constitute uh, uh, elements of interest for tourism. See, yeah, that's what I said right there. That's some sleek talk right there. Talking about some interest for tourism to to act African. We not African, baby. We not African. Get over it. You, he, they trying to be slick because they using like the same talking points from the uh, what's that year of return, like come home. So you saying embrace your Africanism, embrace your inside African for tourism to come home, so we all can get reparations. How many Africans is over there? What y'all gonna get a dollar a piece? <laughs> Children have been separated from their mothers, mm. and uh, we are asking the powers that be to help these people uh, to come back to their roots. Your Excellencies, heads of states, heads of government, distinguished uh, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Talking about Burundi, I can say that we have experienced uh, colonization. Uh, with uh, that we raised, we, we got up and uh, resisted. It is, it is uh, our king who was obliged to accept the authority of the colonizers and uh, colonizers who imposed uh, a penalty of uh, a, a huge penalty on them. Uh, because of these uh, tasks. Uh, uh, based on the interest, ethnic interests. Burundis, Burundians have uh, recovered their dignity. Oh, okay, so he from Burundi. I'm going to have to do some research on them right quick. Now, wasn't they part of um, Rwanda? Am I tripping? Over the entire uh, national territory, and we are concerned not only by the development of our country, but also by uh, securing the sub region and in Africa as a whole through the contribution of our uh, defense forces uh, that are there for uh, peacekeeping. The youth should be the drivers of integral okay. development of our countries. Hence, uh, there are projects for empowerment of youth and women undertaken and results uh, that have been obtained are promising. Our vision is for Burundi uh, to be part of the emerging countries in, uh, between now and 2040 and to become a developed country by 2060. Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, distinguished invited guests. 
uh, I would like to call upon the African people to fight uh, against neocolonialism by working assiduously to ensure economic independence for our countries. And for this, our youth uh, should be well educated and uh, initiated into uh, the sense of good patriotism and to have the African identity. This is a struggle, it should be a struggle against colonialism and all forms of injustice committed against our populations. This requires that all Africans should talk with the same voice and uh, get united. I'm happy that the theme chosen for this conference uh, is uh, a part of this uh, logic. Before I conclude, I'd like to insist on the fact that as Africans, we are called upon to support our, each other mutually in order to advance the cause of justice. See, that's why I say it's slick talk, though. Like, I, I, I peep game. He want us to send money over there and say that we African. That's what he's saying. He's saying that he want us to say we're African. We all speak the same with this pan-African stuff. Send money over there and um, defeat uh, the white people and come home. It's the same thing as the re year of the return. That's all. I wonder who wrote that for him. And uh, ensure the payment of reparations. This requires that we should be determined to respect uh, ourselves uh, and also to work together with our neighbors and brothers in the continent. Concerning the past, the painful past that we have experienced, we are ready to pardon but beyond that, uh, it's important that mechanisms be put in place uh, to repair, to provide reparations to African countries uh, due to the crimes that have been committed against it and uh, 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 considering that our dignity and rights have been trampled upon. Excellencies, uh, heads of government, uh, uh, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like, on behalf of uh, the uh, President of the Republic of Burundi and the people of Burundi, and uh, on my own behalf, I would like to reiterate my uh, sincere gratitude to Your Excellency, uh, President Nana Adedam Kwakufu Abdu, President of the Republic of Ghana, and to all the Ghanaian people for the legendary hospitality that has been uh, given us since our arrival in this uh, beautiful capital, Accra. I would like to thank also the organizers of this conference while hoping that at the end of this uh, uh, conference, uh, solidarity in defending the African cause will be uh, uh, reformulated to inspire the victims and descendants of uh, slavery so that they can... Told you. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Are you. You're not fooling me. You try to throw that at the end. You ain't fooling me. Come home, brothers and sisters. Will sorry we sold you? Join us in our common combat. May God bless Africa and long live Africa United in its search for justice and payment of reparations to Africans. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, you ain't fooling me, buddy. Uh, that's all I heard. The ending, that's all I heard throughout the whole thing. That ain't nothing but a year return speech he gave. Somebody wrote, and all of these damn countries coming in for their bid. Cause so, I ain't going to give my conspiracy theories. We're just going to react to it. But y'all not fooling me. He, he gave that good eight-minute video just to sum up, like, we want the descendants of Africans, which is... That what they calling us to come home and gain, get your money, be well educated, come back, claim your Africanism, and come home so we can all get reparations. <laughs> that's what he's saying. No, dude. No, that's why I said I didn't like him up here being slick, talking about uh, you, you took on the language of your masters. Maybe we wouldn't. You, you slick talk. When, when have you ever heard Africans say, say, say a line like that? Take a line from your masters in Africa. I'm pretty sure y'all uh, practice your tribal 
your tribal practices still in Burundi. I didn't even know that. I didn't watch the uh, video, but okay, that's where he's from. He the prime minister, prime minister from there. But I don't like that dude at all. So we are gonna react to this next speaker. He from South Africa. I think he's speaking on behalf of the president there. Um. Yeah, but that dude, that was an interesting speech though, because it's like he led his way to to saying it. But it's like I heard it from the beginning. He led his way to saying you know, the descendants of the enslaved come home. But it's interesting to me because he said all that stuff about slave masters, not knowing your language and all that. Like, you not slick, buddy, at all. All right, so this is the last speaker. He from South Africa, and he's speaking on behalf of the president. So let's see what he, he has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to be here today on behalf of the South African President, His Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa, who could not make it here today, but um, has conveyed his wishes and gratitude to the President of the Republic of Ghana for inviting him here and also the Republic of South Africa. I'm proud because this is the land of our founding father, Kwame Nkrumah, where you have invited us to reshape the future of our continent. Under the theme and under the permission of the African Union, the theme of the conference adopted by the ordinary session of the Assembly on the 18th and 19th of February, which were expected to address. South Africa fully supports reparatory justice, which is the center of our human rights laws, which are guaranteed in our constitution. As His Excellency President Sarah Ramaphosa said, and I quote, in the South African constitution, we affirm that the South Africans were called upon to build a society based on social justice and fundamental human rights with a view of correcting the injustices of our past. It is a clear and call by our constitution to correct the injustices of the past in our country in South Africa under the history of apartheid, but also in the African continent, which was colonized. It is against this background that South Africa fully supports efforts to correct the wrongs of the past and institutionalize labor, whose impact relegated millions of our people in Africa, the Caribbean and the Middle East to a legacy of poverty and underdevelopment. South Africa urges all participants to this international conference to collectively adopt a unified approach to address the legacy of slavery and reparations. In this context, it may be ideal for the outcome of this reparation conference to be incorporated and to be brought under the umbrella of the African Union decade of African roots and diaspora. The AU Assembly of Heads of States endorsed the convening of the 9th Pan-African Congress as part of the African Union decade to also be held in Lome in Togo. In this respect, we would like to mention that Angola, Namibia, and South Africa form part of the high-level committee for the Southern African region. As South Africa, we have offered to host the Southern African Regional Preparatory Meeting from the 4th to the 5th of December 2023 in Pretoria. I am mentioning this Southern African Regional Conference as it is one of the six regional conferences to be held in preparation for the 9th Pan-African Congress. Mr. President, as South Africa, it is extremely critical that all these processes should succeed, inclusive especially with respect to the sixth region, our brothers in the African Union, as per the AU Assembly Heads of State, we call strongly for the African Union Commission to ensure that the representation of the sixth region is institutionalized. The modalities of how this institutionalization happens have to be done and made during the process of this decade. I am glad that I can see most of the participants from the sixth region here in your conference.
Your Excellencies, across the continent, we need to strengthen partnerships between governments and all segments of civil society, in particular women, youth, and the private sector, to strengthen solidarity and cohesion among all the peoples in Africa and the diaspora. We equally need to strengthen institutions that support restorative justice, healing, reparation, unity, solidarity, and social cohesion. And South Africa will want to see all parties of slave trade and transatlantic slave trade, colonialism, genocide, and apartheid remain crimes against humanity in line with the Deben Declaration and the Program of Action. As, as we address the legacy of slavery, we must equally combat racism to live free from conflicts. At the international level, South Africa hosted the World Conference Against Racism, Racial Discrimination, Xenophobia, and Related Intolerance in 2001. In the conference, the outcome of the conference they thought to name the Deben Declaration and Program of Action. Since the follow-up and implementation of the Deben Declaration, we need to recognize that Permanent Forum of Peoples of African Descent was established at the level of the United Nations. At the UN level, there is another decade that was declared. South Africa also follows that process very Okay, I think it's like five more minutes of this. Um, okay, with South Africa, I'm just giving my little intake. With South Africa, um, I understand they need reparations for apartheid. I do understand that. Um, I know they're going through a lot of things right now. Um, as far as in their country, they're dealing with a lot of immigrants um, coming over there. And messing up their economy and their way of life. Um, I know some of them say that, you know, it's got something to do with the higher-ups. And I kind of heard that, you know. Um, I still do not agree with this all-together inclusiveness because different countries went through different things. But, um, <clears throat> you know, let's just finish up and hear what he has to say, and I'm going to just go ahead and let him talk, and I'll speak after. Excuse me. In the conference outcomes, in the concept paper, we make reference to opportunities for experience sharing, greater networking, synergism, and capacity building amongst the participants. Synergism should also be looked at the national, regional, and international levels. In other words, it will be self-defeating to declare the decade at the African Union level whose timelines are different from the decade declared by the Permanent Forum of the People of African Descent. The alignment of these processes speaks directly to the importance of coherence both at the level of the capitals and the Human Rights Councils in Geneva, the UN General Assembly in New York. We also have to ensure that the reparations Mr. President, the African continent is not going to the world as beggars. We are owners of natural resources, which are now enabling the world to add up great innovations, including electric cars. This will not happen in the world without... South Africa has started an initiative on strategic minerals. We believe this is an important part for, 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 for foreign direct investment to enable us to have jobs beneficiate in our continent so that we do not export us of, we do not become exporters of jobs powered by our own natural resources. This conference will also enable us to be able to protect these natural resources so that the jobs are, protect, are, are created here in the African continent. When we export, we export what has become finished products. We can't continue to export jobs to the capitals of the world. We must enable this reparatory conference to help us with regards to many issues even related to the foreign direct investment in the continent that will enable us to change the trajectory of history. The kids of the African continent must be working next to their homes, a straw throw away from their parents and a straw throw away from their forefathers. The African Free Trade Initiative, which is also a straw thrown away from where we are today, hosted by you, the government of Ghana, should also enable us to ensure interlinkages, economic beneficiation, and also collaboration amongst the African continent. 
This must also increase the economic growth of the African continent, but also must enable us to create jobs in this continent so that our kids are not beggars. We are not going to the world with a basket of begging, but as people who have got natural resources, who are well resourced, who wants people to come in into our countries to help us to invest so that we are able to change the trajectory of the kids of Africa. In the next 10 years, we must begin of a different Africa in terms of the economy and in terms of job creation. That is the future that this reparatory conference must enable us to change this trajectory. In conclusion, South Africa believes that reparatory justice for Africans and people of African descent can be best served through redressing the inequalities arising from the legacy of slavery, the slave trade, and the transatlantic slave trade. We look forward to listening to the discussions on the proposed strategies going forward. In the 2001 conference adopted measures such as the following, debt relief, poverty reduction strategies, promotion of foreign direct investment, agriculture and addressing issues of food security. Since then, we have seen regression in the conditions for African people and of African descent due to COVID-19, during which we saw the developed North prioritizing itself over the developed South. It is in this context that we should look closely at African excellencies. There is historical evidence that Africans and these people of African descent, especially black women, have excelled in scientific areas and sports. African women in particular, they plow across the African continent. We are here standing in front of you because of the food that they produce. Okay, that was it for this. I still don't like the all-inclusiveness. You know, reparations does need to be paid to South Africans for the apartheid, you know, but I do know that they are going through things. I believe I mentioned this earlier with uh, the migrant, <clears throat> the immigrant problem going on down mm -hmm. there. Um, He's probably the most intelligent speaker I've heard so far because it just seemed like everybody else was dragging on. But his speech feels just a way with words, you know. Everybody else was just saying the same thing over and over again. Um, I still have yet to hear anyone say anything about their participation in the slave trade. The second guy was giving little hints and clues, but it's like you still saying that, oh, because of colonization, we used uh, jungle law um, on our people. I think that's what he basically was saying, but he still didn't outright say, like, yeah, we participated with this jungle law, which we have been practicing way before anybody ever got here. Now, it was a South African. I think he did mention that, you know, um, it was slavery in the Middle East. So that's where, you know, things kind of, it don't work out because, you know, those Middle Eastern people are now in North Africa. So, like, with the reparations, are you paying reparations to the North Afri the North Africans, which are Arabs too, which are also asking for reparations? <laughs> you know, it's kind of crazy. This whole thing is crazy. I still don't like the second speaker because it just seemed like he being slick with his words, talking about, you know, we took on the ways of the slave master or the master, but you know. But like I said, at the end, he was being slick with his words and he outright said it. Like, we want you guys to come back and have an African mindset with money so we can get this reparations. Everything just pulling from us. They got the idea from us. CARICOM went over there. Certain people from over here doing this Pan-African thing over there. It's all type of people in the audience. I don't know. But we're going to finish up um, the rest of the um, summit. Um, I hope you I hope y'all like it so far. Um this is just um, interesting to watch, and we really do kind of have a keep an eye on this because they did get the idea from us, and with them wanting to tie us to Africa, this is like a hijack. Honestly, I think it's a hijack. I really do. But, um, yeah, so that's it for now. I'll speak to you all later. Have a good one.